guys welcome back to the channel this is going to be a video i'm going to put together i'm going hunting i'm going to be spending the next five maybe even six days depending on the weather i just drove through a nasty thunderstorm i can barely see shit but i'm heading to my dad's place and we're going to be spending the next like i said five or six days uh we're going to be doing a bow hunting opening day of bow season in michigan is uh tomorrow october 1st so uh yeah i'm going to be trying to put something together for you guys hopefully i get some uh exciting footage for those of you who uh, are deer hunters um yeah wish me luck i'll be uh, piecing this thing together as uh, the week progresses you killed it <laughs> i think i did <laughs> at six it's just uh an in introduction to anybody who doesn't know how to shoot a compound or crossbow. You got to work out like years before you can get the strength to do it. Well, since I'm old and withered and decrepit now from all the years of training, I have to use a crossbow. <laughs> it's, it's legal now. Looks like it went down. Does it really? Yep. Okay, now we're going to try it again after the 27th time. Yeah, right? Uh, no, that was last time. <laughs> that other shit scope. That guy still charges you for it, man. Not cool. Definitely a nice scope, though. Hmm. Looks like I went through. Uh, it's like I'm consistently. Well, I might be back in my same hole here. Yeah, that's what happened. You can see it right here. So I'm like right next to it, but it's still. still got it's still come perfect up. center. Yeah, I still got to come up. Shit. Here, right here. Dad, if I can't hit the target, I'll just film you shooting them. <laughs> uh, I hit them with my Matthews and I can hit them with the rifle. Here we go. You're on your way up. Am I? Yep. Off anything, Dad, if uh, we'll get a good laugh. You're always good for a I'll, laugh. I'll hit a fisherman or something out there on Lake Michigan. We'll be fishing for salmon. <laughs> I you coming in because you'd soil yourself. Yeah, you got right. You killed it again. Do though, we bust each other's balls in good fun. Yeah, we're just out here in uh, the Manistee National Forest, right at the edge of it, uh, at the Bazaar Camp. Yeah, that's right. The main headquarters. Yeah. Yeah. No neighbors next door at all. No neighbors to be found. Good deal. No big city BS to piss you off. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll think piss you off here is just like the raccoons coming up and shitting on the deck. <laughs> That's it. All right, here we go. Hold on, I'm focusing in. Okay. Almost there. Oh, close, close, close. Final adjustments. Better be. Oh yeah! There we go. Dead nuts, dude. <laughs> it's dead. I, uh, what I like about that scope too, man, it looks like I wish it was a grenade launcher. <laughs> boom, boom, and just blow the deer up. Did you hear the thing when it hits? <laughs> I feel a lot better now because my previous scope that came with this crossbow having all kinds of issues, even after this guy supposedly repaired it and uh, charged my dad for it, and then. Uh, yeah, it just didn't fix it because it was same old scenario. I tried to shoot again and the thing was not adjusting, so I just went and bought a new scope. I was dead on with my field points at the range when we first got the scope. And then I uh, wanted to try these because my experience all the times that I've been hunting and I've been shooting different broadheads throughout the years, uh, these do fly different, but we got everything under control, so I feel a lot better about this. That's gonna do it for the first uh, first morning of the opening day of bow season here in Michigan. Um, it was uneventful. I didn't see anything. Saw a bunch of birds, uh, a couple squirrels, but that was about it. That's just kind of what happens sometimes. You don't always get lucky, but um, this spot that I'm sitting this morning is a transition area. Actually, last year we flipped this around. So you can't really tell, but there's like a break in the trees over there. And I was sitting right around that area watching uh, that transition line that way. And I had uh, two deer come by. Uh, one was a small eight-pointer, and I didn't shoot them. Um, it's just one of those things. I don't shoot everything in the woods like a lot of people up here in Michigan do. I'm just not one of those people. Um, I'm kind of holding off for something nice, something bigger. So... Yeah, that's kind of a thing of a pass. Like if it was if it was just all about that, I would just go ahead and shoot it though, which I'm kind of considering as we get closer to the end here with uh, the time that my dad and I are hunting. So uh, yeah, leading up to uh, like closer to gun season, if I come across a nice doe, I might shoot it though. But it's early. This is the first day, and then um, this evening we focus on uh, getting in. Uh, focus on some bedding areas where I think these big bucks might be. I usually sit these transition lines uh, in the morning. I try to stay away from bedding. But actually right here I got a really pounded trail that you can, I can see it from here. Right here dug into the ground and follows this transition line. So it's a pretty nice area but just uh, you don't always uh, see deer when you're out here but it is what it is so we're going to keep pushing this is only day one so i uh, look forward to uh, catching up with you guys again shortly right before i split the woods i want to show you guys this tree i was sitting up against this thing's absolutely enormous so i was sitting right there and it's just a freaking massive tree but what was nice about this when i was coming in this morning it kind of sucks too because coming in the dark you can't really you're just kind of hunting on the fly, just going in blind and uh, just trying to see what you can see with the light that you do have. But what's nice about this tree is uh, 
it's so freaking wide around the base of the tree that it just totally covers my back. I mean, this thing is just super, super big. So I can get away with quite a bit if I got anything coming up behind me. But I was focusing on this area right here. Just looking out this way where that runway comes across along the transition here. And look in that direction, just trying to cover this whole area. Just as I was stalking my way out the woods, I came across this. Check this out. Boom. Got a scrape right on the edge of the transition. Right there. Found some fresh rubs on the way out too, so they're here. Alright, we have returned for the evening hunt. Uh, we're in a new location. Actually, when we drove up, the spots I had marked on the uh, Onyx map, somebody was already hunting it, so we had to drive past a little bit. Now we're in a new area. I kicked two deer up uh, when I was coming into the spot that it marked on the map. It's kind of like a on-the-fly thing, the last-minute thing we had to do, but uh, my shots are very limited in here. Check this out. So I got a lot of this immature growth in here, and the ferns are still kind of high, too, so mixed with these... Uh, this pine plantation and then it transitions right here I tried to find a spot in there for like god it must have been 20 minutes I could not find a spot there's nowhere I can get a shot in there just a bunch of fallen dead stuff and just yeah like this undergrowth this immature uh, growth mixed in with those oaks but uh, I did come across quite a few uh, deer trails so they're definitely here and I've been finding piles of shit everywhere on the, on the ground but uh, wish me luck So I'm on day two of our uh, hunt. This is Friday, October 2nd. I'm sweating my balls off. I hiked about maybe a little over 800 yards to get back into this spot. I'm within striking distance of where I was going to set up on my Onyx where I marked the uh, waypoint. But um, when you get out here, things look a little different. So what I have now, just found my spot. I got to I gotta freaking catch a breath. I'm sweating my ass off. I got to slow it down. But I found my spot for the evening set. It's about 2.30, so I got a good five, five and a half hours before it gets, you know, dark to where I can't shoot. But uh, what I got so far, up against this big old pine tree here, and I got tag alders back here, and then it's, uh, it's shootable through here, and I just came across some pretty good deer sign, pretty impressive sign. And then there's another pinch through here, so all the deer travel will be coming this way or this way. Uh, winds in my favor. Um, everything should be good to go. Over there, there's like a cut line uh, mixed with some cattails and some fragmites, some tall grass. And there was just a just a pounded trail going down that thing. Um, I thought maybe it was walkable on the way in here because it does come from the road, but it was a tangle mess. It was a pain in the ass, so I just kind of stayed inside the wood line to get to where I'm at now. But I'm going to get situated, get prepared, and I do have a story about what happened last night on October 1st, opening day. I had a lot of action, so I will share that guy, I will share that with you guys. So I'm going to be right here, a pretty comfortable spot. I try not to do too much out here. I try not to alter the woods too much. So it's just very, very minor, clearing some branches out of my way. I don't try to make anything look too different. Gotta kind of bust my stuff out of here so I got decent clear shooting. Nothing moves from a boot, like if I have to make a move. Move this guy out of the way. Knock these ferns down too. But other than that, decent shooting around me. Modified this this sit a little bit. What I did was uh, instead of being sit, oh, I'm trying. So I'm sitting right there, over here now. So now I'm watching. I got everything just how I want it now. So I think they're gonna come right down here, right 
through here. Let's see what happens. It's gonna be a long walk back to the truck tonight. This is about 850 yards. Check the window, make sure it's in good shape. Right in my face. Perfect. Alright, it finally stopped raining after like I think about 15 20 minutes ago. It finally stopped raining. We had heavy rain coming in. I'm freaking soaked inside and out. Not only from hiking in here, but also when I first got set up. Within 20 minutes, half hour, just started raining, just did not stop. On top of it, you got the wind blowing all the water down on me, like, look at my bow. It's just soaked. It was even more soaked than that. You can just see that everything's got to dry up out here. But we're getting there. So it's starting to quiet down. We don't have as many uh, heavy winds. It kind of calmed down a bit. I, I'm so happy that that sun shining down. I'm going to dry myself off because I'm freaking soaked. But it's going to be worth it. I'm committed. I walked 800 yards back here to get to this spot that I felt confident in. I still feel confident. I'm going to see something tonight, and it's going to be a good evening. So I'll talk to you guys soon. I figure right before it gets uh, closer to prime time, which is going to be in about an hour from now, the sun's finally starting to go down. But I figured I'd share my story with you guys, uh, what happened last night opening day so opening evening um, went into this spot I kind of talked a little bit about it where uh, we had to drive past a guy that was in the spot that I had picked out for my dad and I to sit so we drove a little bit further up these train tracks and he went on one side of the tracks and went on the other side so I walked in about maybe 400 and I think it was about 430 yards or something like that um, jumped a doe on the way in there, but she didn't really spook. She didn't have her tail up or anything, so I just kind of stopped for a second, and then she took a couple steps and went in the other direction. So basically, it was another transition type deal where I followed these uh, these planted pines in, and on the other side, of the transition there was these um, like this undergrowth of oaks, and then it was mixed in with a little bit taller oaks. Um, deer trails everywhere. There was poop everywhere, so I knew that I was in a pretty good location. Even then, you know, it was pretty much right where I marked, uh, where I figured it would be a good place to sit. So, um, I spent a good 20 minutes. I sat down maybe three different times. I picked a couple different trees. I was in the oak section of the transition, and it was just too thick when I would get down. Because I'm sitting on the ground. I sit up on the, uh, against a tree on the ground. So I sat down, and all those, uh, all that undergrowth and the ferns are still up and everything. I had no shot. Each time I sat down, I didn't have a shot. I said, well, this is no good. So my next plan, I jumped back up, walked towards the pines, and um, there was a runway that kind of came right and kind of paralleled everything. So I said, this is exactly what they're going to do based on um, all the research that I've done, all of the uh, reading on message boards, watching plenty of hunting videos. Um, when you're in those transitions like that, they're going to walk that transition. And sure enough, I sat there, and right around 6 o'clock, I had a fawn come by. Then there was a doe behind her, and all of a sudden there was a pretty nice eight-pointer. So I got excited, and like a light bulb went off. I know I told you guys that I'm done shooting any smaller deer. But something hit me. I'm like, you know what, this would be the first, this would be the first deer that I ever took where... I didn't have a tree stand, I didn't have a blind, I had no bait pile out, I wasn't hunting off of any of that stuff. So I would be very, very proud of this deer by taking him. And, um, like, if he follows, if he continues to follow down this path behind the, the fawn and the doe, I got him because they were within 10 yards of me. Never even knew I was there. So, um, all of a sudden, he got close to, uh, where the fawn and the doe walked by. And there was another buck, actually, a small six-pointer that I didn't see the pattern that he took. Um, I just didn't happen to see him. But So um, that eight-pointer that I was going to shoot, I had a safety off and everything. I was ready to let him have it. And um, so he kind of turned towards uh, where the six-pointer came out. They started sparring in front of me. So uh, they get, like, right, right in front of me perfectly. And they're going at it and stuff. And I was kind of, like, in a hole. I think one of these pine plantations, you got like these dugouts. I was kind of like right in that dugout, and then and, and there was also like mixed in um, undergrowth of uh, oak trees, baby oak trees and stuff in there, mixed with the ferns. 
So I was like hunkered down and their heads were behind the trees. They were behind two pine trees. So I'm like, man, I'm just going to stand up because I can't get a shot right here. So I stood up and then I walked a little bit towards there was a pine tree in front of me. And uh, kind of looking around making sure nothing's coming in. So I stood up and I leaned against that pine tree. And one of the bucks was perfectly broadside, 20 yards. You know, could have let him, could have let him rip. But I didn't know if it was that six pointer or the eight pointer that I that I was going to intentionally take, because yeah, when they spar, and same thing with these two bucks, they kind of move around, they kind of shift positions, and um, I just wanted to be sure that I wasn't shooting a smaller buck. So I waited, 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 and um, they backed up. You know, they disengaged, and then. Uh, that buck that was broadside, it happened to be that buck the whole time, but I didn't know he was behind the tree. And at that point, he was like facing me this way. I'm like, I can't do anything yet. So I waited, waited, and then he started to turn and kind of go back the way they came. And all of a sudden, the six-pointer kind of walked off the opposite direction, heading, back, heading towards where he was intending to go. And then that buck turned back around and started walking his way. But at this point, he started to walk kind of quartering away and he was a little bit more out of range and at that point I had a couple limbs in the way I'm like ah, I'm not gonna do it so um after that happened I waited about I don't know five minutes I sat back down put the safety back on my crossbow I'm like man that kind of sucks you know and then um, I had another doe come by um, right down that same transition line so um, I'm definitely getting into the deer and then my dad when I got back to the truck he uh he, would, he had his tailgate down, he was putting his stuff away, he hopped in his hopped in the truck and uh, he said he was sitting in there for a few minutes and the dome light went out and all of a sudden he saw something move in front of him, it sounded like a white, like maybe it was a skunk or something walking down on the, on the ground in front of his truck. So he hit the lights and like four does just like, you know, got caught by surprise and took off running so these two were right in front of my dad's truck the whole time. And they never spooked by any of that noise he was making, like around the tailgate or anything. It's crazy, you know. But that's what happened here. Um, it's starting to quiet down out here. And the sun's starting to go down. So I am going to shut up because it's about to become prime time. And hopefully something happens tonight. I'm way back here. It's so quiet. I don't hear vehicles. I don't hear nothing. It's just uh, it was worth walking back here. I'm totally committed. I'm soaked inside and out, but I do not care because I feel confident in the spot, but uh, yeah, wish me luck. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, I got another good story for you guys. About a half hour ago, I had this little seven-pointer come in. It's prime time. I'm going to, I really got, I shouldn't be doing this, but it's just too funny. So I had like this little seven-pointer come in. He came in right through there and walked right towards me and started rubbing that tree right there getting his face all up in the branches and then he kept putting his nose up to the air and slowly started walking towards me he got right to where this tree is right here I think that's a maple tree and he continued to walk around the tree and he kept looking my direction looking right at me putting his nose up he was trying to get the wind but he couldn't get it because the wind's blowing that way but he kept smelling his, his curiosity he brought he came all the way right here that tree right in front of me, which is four yards away, he was standing right there looking at me, and he kept putting his nose up, and he was trying to catch what what he uh, what I think is uh, <laughs> I had a metrics bar earlier, I ate a protein bar, and I think he smelled that wrapper in my pocket because he kept putting his nose up and he kept licking his chops, like trying to catch the wind of that. And he kept coming closer and closer, and I was trying so hard not to laugh. I was I was about to laugh, but I just could not like. I, I try as hard as I could to uh, not laugh, and then um, I think, yeah, I, I, I gasp for air, or I, I, you know, like, because I froze, I hid behind my crossbow, I'm hiding behind my scope, because he's walking right up at me, and, uh, <laughs> and then uh, he, he took, like, a couple jumps, like, he, he kind of freaked him out a little bit, he, he took, like, one or two little jumps, and then he stopped, and he looked back at me, and he's putting his nose up again, he's licking his chops. <laughs> This deer almost walked right in my lap, but um, I think he walked, yeah, he went, uh, he walked back that way, I don't see him anymore, he's gone, I think, but, uh, 
it just gets better and better. I love this shit so much. And I'm right up against the tree. I'm seeing more deer like this than any of the other times that I've ever sat in a tree stand, you know, sat in a blind, any of that stuff. Well, that about does it for this evening sit. I didn't see anything else after that little seven pointer um, that came within pretty much on top of my lap. Um, once he walked off, I didn't see anything after that. So I got a long walk back to the truck. So I'm just about out of light and I'm going to wrap this up. All right, guys, we're on day three. I just saw four doe. This was like maybe uh, I don't know, half an hour ago. saw those four deer come through and I was like over here this morning I couldn't really tell because it was dark out I couldn't I couldn't tell uh, if my position was good or not but then by the time I got gray light I was wide open on the side of me to my left and it just was no good so I was like over here somewhere maybe about 30 yards that way so what I did was uh, wait a little bit looked around and I kind of eyeballed a tree, which is right over here by me, from where I was sitting originally, that way. So I was going to get in there, but there's a deer trail coming across right here. So I said, ah, I don't want to be near that trail, so I walked this way. I found this tree that I'm sitting against right now. But then after I got situated and set up, I noticed there's this runway coming right out here. So these two trails that intersect they come together right here and then there's a trail that runs along this transition right here between those oaks and these pines I didn't want it to end up that way but it's like you kind of do things at the last minute on the fly I just didn't want to be walking around too much looking for another tree so I, I decided on this one right here probably that tree right there right in this area be much better that way you can get a shot at these two trails coming out you're not right on the trail and you can actually shoot that transition trail right there but i saw four more deer so so far so good every time i've been getting on the deer except for opening morning that was it all right that was pretty crazy just as i got done talking to you guys i was getting ready to pack it up took my mask off took my gloves off put my quiver on pulling up my onyx to figure out how to get out of here because i'm taking a different route to get out of this area all set five more deer at that same place boom 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 then there was two more so yeah i saw 10 deer so far actually nine deer i gotta win that count so i saw nine deer so far but uh yeah i'm trying to sneak out of here get out in a different way this is going to be a, i think this will be a great spot for maybe even the evening maybe i gotta set up in a different manner but i'll probably gonna give this a day a day off just to kind of settle down because i was in here but what's good is it's kind of raining on and off to wash that scent away. But I'm trying to sneak out of here without these deer knowing I'm here. Alright, I'm heading west right now. Kind of coming down this deer trail. There's a, looks like a big generation rub right here. Old rub. Here's that other pounded trail. Holy shit, look at this runway. Holy crap. Wow, dude. This trail's freaking pounded. Wow. <laughs> That's insane. And here's a scrape right here. Looks like from last year. This trail, this is like a freaking horse trail. Wow. This better not be a people trail. I don't think so, man. There's deer tracks in it. There's acorns everywhere. Big oaks in here. Man, it's 
freaking killer back here. I just saw three more deer just walking out back to the truck. So see this over here? That field edge right there. It looked like maybe it was a buck. It was a bigger body. I couldn't quite tell. I, I, I got down real quick. I'm like, holy shit, there's a deer walking right there. Grabbed my crossbow, put it up there. It's kind of hard to tell. I had his, had his head down. There's all those ferns up there. But um, all of a sudden, there was two more does right behind him. Whatever deer that was in front. Dude, I'm seeing deer like crazy. That's 12 deer so far. I can't believe that deer didn't see me. Dude, check this freaking rub out. Oh my god. Look how high off the ground that is. Wow. That is a huge freaking tree. Zoom in on that. That is a big freaking tree. I'm heading west. I'm heading in the right direction, so I know where to go. But let's just check this out a little bit. So I just walked past this big rub right here. There's this monster rub. God, it thinks that's a big deer got the gouge marks up here yeah and there's a nice little transition it's a pound of trail going along there um yeah let's just kind of walk along here so i gotta keep heading this direction i know where i'm going here's another rub right here it's a smaller one i just didn't want to take the other way out different route so these deer can't eventually get on to you as you go in the same take the same paths over and over they definitely uh figure you out it doesn't take long especially a buck whoever made that big rub jesus i kind of walked away from those deer i kind of went on a different angle just like i'm hoping that i don't spook them so i started walking the other direction there's at least one tank in here there's, yeah, there's some old rubs in front of me, too. There's a lot of freaking deer back here. All right, we're getting back after them uh, for the evening sit. So it's Saturday, October 3rd now. I got, uh, I'll probably stay another full day tomorrow. Stay till Monday. Because uh, things have been going so well out here. So I got a little bit of a hike. It's not too bad. This should be a little bit better walking for today anyway. This gets me a... Uh, a chunk of the distance uh, relatively easy and then I got uh it's not gonna be too bad of a walk where I gotta go it should be okay but yeah when I get situated I'll show you guys the, the spot that I'll have picked out so I'll talk to you shortly it's looking pretty good in here so far I think I'm gonna knock an arrow and stalk my way in cuz uh, like what happened this morning you just never freaking know trying to kick it around me in a little bit of a dilemma right now. So I just walked to the spot that I had marked and uh, it's, it looks to be like a small it's tall grass mixed with maybe a little bit of cattails and some fragmites. It's, it's hard to tell until you get out here and actually see. Um, I'm starting to learn this stuff as I go each time that I pull something up on this Onyx map and then see what it looks like from the ground. So what I got here spot I got marked is uh it's within yeah, it's kind of glowing but that's cattails mixed with those fragmites and tall grass and the other spot I got marked is another few hundred yards in that direction um, it's a few hundred yards further down from the transition that I sat this morning. I kind of want to go over there instead. So I think I'm going to walk past this one, but yeah, it, it's a tough call because there might be something better in there. There might not be. It's hard to tell. Um, usually you can see the deer trails leading into, you know, if there's a lone tree or something out there, which there was, I didn't see any trails out from the aerial. Um, so I think I'm going to push it a little bit further. 
break. I'm about 138 yards away from my destination, the spot that I got marked, but this is what it looks like. I just walk through kind of a swampy, marshy kind of area back here. I gotta head that way somewhere. But that's where the food is, that's where the oak transition is. In here, it's just, yeah, there's a, there's some acorns, but there's not a whole lot. All the food is that direction. So that's where I want to go. And hopefully I, I pick the right tree, make the right choice tonight. All right, here's what I'm going to do based on what I see out here. Oh, squirrel. <laughs> Almost gave me a heart attack. I found, oh, found this rubber here, but... I've been following a little bit of this opening. I wanted to get off of there because two trails come in right on the edge of that opening right there with that grass. And I can see over there, there's another section of grass. But there's some woods. There's a section of woods coming over right here that crosses. So between that opening, that opening, got that trail coming across here. And I'm sure there's another trail coming through here. So I want to sit right here somewhere, and that'll put me in my best advantage. Good thing too is I specifically wanted to pick this kind of area because I don't know if you guys can hear that on the on the mic, but it is raining. I want to make sure I was underneath the pine tree so I don't get a soaking ass ass out here. So I'm gonna pick my spot, and then I'll check in with you guys again, show you what I got. Once again, I'm sweating my tail off a little bit. Not as bad as yesterday, but. I'm situated, just sat down, just got everything cleared out behind me, right behind me. There's my moo. Here's where I think they're going to come out. There's a heavy trail. There's actually many trails tying into um, this trail that runs along the edge here, where these two open spots are. And one comes right through here. Now, I was thinking about sitting there, but I'll be too close to everything, and it'll kind of be helping me open the tree. The tree kind of is up like this, and I didn't want that. I'm kind of down in a hole right here, so I'm like in a low spot where I, I got significantly more cover. I got a good backdrop behind me, too. So I'm hoping I catch some movement here in a little bit. So I wish me luck. It's been about 15 minutes since I sat down. I've been kind of kicking it around. I hope this doesn't come back and bite me in the ass, but about 100 yards, a little bit behind me, that way, is where the oaks are. And I'm not in any oaks over here. I mean, there's a lot of runways. That's the problem. That's the thing that kind of will throw you a curveball. Sometimes you'll get excited. You'll be walking by, just pounded deer trails. But I don't know if that's being pounded at night or what, but my gut instinct tells me I gotta be in those oaks for the night when they come in and start feeding on them, if it's gonna be anything like what I saw this morning. Hopefully I'm not wrong. So, it's still early, it's not even 3 o'clock yet. I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna slowly make my way that way. Plus the wind will be better for um, shooting away the, the transition line. Um, the way it runs through here, I think it'll put me in a more optimal spot. Alright, I just got to a pretty promising tree. As far as food sources go, I am in the game. There are acorns everywhere. I can still hear them falling. So, I found the transition that I was originally looking for. So, I got this wall of pines right here. Goes along that way. And this is all oak trees. Everything in here. So, the tree, I was either going to sit there. I'm kind of kicking it around. Do I sit there, or do I sit here, this tree right here? This one, the wind is dead nuts in my face, so I'm probably going to sit right here. Is that way? That way I can watch that transition there. I can check both areas at the same time, so I think I'm going to hold it right here so I get set up. It only took a few minutes. I am ready for action. So this tree right here. See, there's acorns all over the place in here. So, I think all the activity is going to be right there. I was over in that area. So, it's just my, my gut instinct is all 
all this action that I think is going to take place in these oaks uh, with them feeding on the acorns and everything. There's a lot more sign here too. Um, there, I mean those trails were, they were hit over there, but I think this is where I need to be. This is, uh, I feel a lot more confident. I'm glad that I moved into this spot. So I'm going to shut up and I'm going to keep my eyes peeled. Just when I thought I was satisfied, I was not satisfied enough, so I ended up moving. From that tree to this tree that I originally looked at, it's just better. I can cover, I can stay hidden on this transition, and I can watch everything from my left to right. It's just a, it's a much better situation. Plus, I got all this to hide me and cover me from uh, the rain that keeps stopping and starting. That was like my game plan, cause it, especially that first tree that I sat over on that uh, that edge right there where that kind of the little finger funnel was. I was like wide open. The tree that I was leaning up against was just not that big in diameter. Um, I would have got soaked if it would have started raining. And I hear it raining on, on and off and I get wet at all in here, so I think I'm in good shape. Alright guys, that's going to wrap up my evening hunt. I totally picked the right area. I, did, I made the right move. I was all over deer pretty much all the way up until this point, which is dark. It's starting to rain pretty hard. I am so glad I picked this tree that I sat under. I'm under this looks like a fir tree or some kind of spruce, but man, totally blocking. Once I start walking, I'm going to get a wet ass, but man, shit, do I got a deer right next to me right now? Where's that? It's hard to tell. Um, so I had about 18, 19 deer total that I seen. I had about six of them come up uh, um, up to the side of me actually. Right where I right where I thought they were gonna come out to. I don't know if you guys can see, but here's like the corner of where the transition kind of makes like a, a V shape. They came out right here. And I had this little button buck come to within two yards right here. And he also walked right here. And there's my spot that I originally picked. And I swear these deer, this is like their living room. If they see anything out of the ordinary, something got kicked, something got moved, they freaking know about it because he stood right there and he was looking right there, looking at the ground like something's up, something's different. And then he kept looking at me. So anyway, once, once they kind of walked away, they kind of turned around, went back where they came. All of a sudden, right out there at that movement, there's another transition back that way. All of a sudden body 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 I, I lost count how many deer came through there probably eight or nine deer and then uh, I had to wait them out it was like I pretty much saw deer and I, I was like in a really uncomfortable position for like the next two hours because I had slowly this uh, little fawn walked up towards me they're eating the crap out of the acorns in here and this fawn was just just being a pain in the ass no pun intended because my ass got so sore just trying to I got real stiff and I was like stuck in this position because I could not move. And I swear, uh, off to my left, I think I saw an eight pointer. The frame was um, like a, an eight pointer, maybe even a 10 pointer um, off to my left. So I saw him stick his head out and I saw the main frame of his rack, um, probably a two year old. Yeah, he wasn't really big, but his body size and everything, he was significantly bigger than all the other deer I saw out here. But I saw his rack first. So I saw that guy, but I didn't see him come in. He must have turned with the way in position these trees are. Um, off the straight line back, so I didn't see him after that. And these um, deer that were in front of me, this doe, they were all just slowly, you know, meandering their way through here through these oaks, just chopping on the acorns just as I expected. Um, the doe laid down in front of me, the one that I could see. I think a lot of the other deer probably bedded down too right in front of me, and I just couldn't see them, but I saw the one doe bed down. Then, again, eventually, the fawn, by the way, eventually walked off this way, and uh, I was able to adjust my ass so I could get feeling in my, my, my feet and my ass again. Then all of a sudden, I had this doe, this fawn, and this little four-pointer come out right here. Um, that same spot where those original deer came out. So they hung out for a minute, and then I saw about three more deer off to my right coming down the transition so I saw a lot I had a lot of action tonight it's freaking cool but I'm running out of light I gotta get back to the truck 
and um, yeah, I'll check in with you guys soon. Oh my god. I just had the best morning I've ever had in my entire life hunting all these years I've been hunting. I'll tell you guys about it soon. I gotta go get my dad. I know he saw everything that I saw. I'll catch back up with you guys shortly.